All right, so let's move on to the next phase, which is finding a great supplier who can consistently deliver you high quality products for you to sell on Amazon. Now, optimally at this point, you already have a list of some product ideas, like five to 10 product ideas, so that you can now focus on finding a great supplier for each of these products. Now you wanna do this one by one, so take the product that you're most confident in, that you're most excited about, and start researching suppliers for this product first. Now, if you're gonna have a hard time finding a supplier that you feel comfortable with, you can also move on to the next products and look for a supplier for other products. So eventually, you're gonna have um, suppliers for a couple of different products, which will give you a better idea eventually which product you actually want to go for and launch with a reliable and good quality supplier. So let's get started. So just like we've done with our product research, where we focused on those nine criteria to decide on if a product is a good idea or a bad idea, when looking for suppliers, you also wanna apply um, some criteria what you are looking for in a great supplier. So the first one would be product quality. This is the most important one. So the, the manufacturer, the supplier has to be able to deliver you a high quality product Otherwise, you should discard this uh, supplier immediately because eventually you're not gonna be successful selling a low quality product. On Amazon, you're gonna get bad reviews and your business is not gonna work. So the only real way how we can judge the quality if a product is good is if you're gonna order samples. I'm gonna talk later about how to order samples and what to actually do with those samples to test the quality. The second one is unit cost. So obviously we are intending to make a profit because we're gonna build a business. And so we need to negotiate a great price for the units that we're gonna order from the supplier. I'm gonna get into how to negotiate these prices so it's fair for both sides because you wanna also have a good long-term relationship with them. So they need to make a profit as well, but you need to negotiate a great um, unit cost for your products. Obviously that also depends on how many units you're gonna order, but um, you wanna make sure that you're gonna have a great price for your product so you can actually make a profit. Then the next one is communication. You're gonna find that if you're gonna uh, contact suppliers in Asia mainly, um, then it's, communication can be hard sometimes. And it's partly because just English is not their main language and the culture is also different as well. I'm gonna give you some tips there as well, um, but you definitely wanna get into business with, with somebody who can communicate effectively and somewhat easily because eventually this is gonna be like your business partner delivering you the products. And if you wanna make changes to the products also to make it better, it's gonna be very hard if the communication is very difficult. So these are the three main things you wanna look for in a great supplier. Then some other things you wanna consider is that there are manufacturers and also trading companies. And manufacturers are basically creating their products and making them and trading companies are basically buying them from manufacturers and then reselling them to make a profit themselves. Now, optimally, you wanna go for a manufacturer. Going for a trading company also has its benefits and sometimes you will have to choose a trading company because you're not gonna find any manufacturer, but I'm gonna also get into what the differences are there and what to look for. Then the last point is experience and rating. Now, if you're gonna look on Alibaba for products, you're gonna see the experience level, so how many years they are in business, and also the rating. Now, this is not the most important thing because sometimes you're gonna find that these uh, companies, they, they are actually a lot longer in business than what Alibaba says because they had to create another account and stuff like that. But the more experience and the higher the rating is, obviously the better. And also the response rate that we're gonna look at, it's also good if they have a high response rate. But eventually, you're gonna notice if they're a high quality supplier when you go back and forth with them. Now, where should we go and look for suppliers? So you have mainly two options. You can either go and look for a supplier locally, so in the country that you are selling in, or you can also go to alibaba.com and look for suppliers in Asia, mainly China. So both of these options have their advantages and disadvantages. And what you mainly wanna do is you wanna look uh, locally and also in Asia, so you have more options to choose from. Because sometimes people just go to look on Alibaba and they don't even think that there might be a supplier also locally. So let's quickly go over the advantages and disadvantages of both options. First, the product quality. Usually um, the product quality, if you have a local supplier, is a lot better just by default because the standards are kind of higher there. Um, if you're selling US or Europe. And uh, in Asia, they also have good suppliers, obviously, um, but you also have some suppliers that are delivering bad quality. So you have to really check the quality 
ordering samples, doing product inspections and all that kind of stuff. So the product quality can be variable, but obviously when we go to the next uh, point, unit cost is a lot cheaper usually when you go and look for suppliers on Alibaba in Asia. Uh, locally, it's gonna be more expensive. Then um, shipping cost. So it, because you have to ship the, um, the products from overseas to Europe or the US, if you're selling in this part of the, the world, then it's gonna be more expensive, obviously, because it's just a longer way. If your supplier is already local, then obviously the shipping cost will be a lot cheaper. And then, as you can see here, if the shipping cost uh, is so much cheaper when you have a local supplier, then maybe um, you can get away with a higher unit cost and you, you might actually be better off looking for or working with a local supplier compared to with a supplier um, from Asia because um, the shipping cost is so much uh, cheaper. Now, shipping time is obviously higher when you order from Asia compared to local supplier. Then the communication, which is a big point as well, as you're going to notice when you um, work with suppliers, that um, with Asia, it can be very difficult. And with local suppliers, obviously, it's a lot easier. The variety of suppliers that you're going to find for most products in, in on Alibaba, you're just going to have so much more suppliers. For most products that you're probably looking at, there aren't even any suppliers that are offering private labeling um, uh, locally. So you don't really have the choice. But uh, you want to definitely do a Google search and look if there are any local suppliers. I'm going to show you exactly uh, what to type in to find those local suppliers. And then what's very important also, if you intend to sell food products or like stuff that goes in or on your body, definitely don't go with a supplier from Asia because the regulations there are just different. So the way you go and look for local suppliers is actually pretty straightforward. You simply go to Google and then just type in your product right here. So for example, let's say we want to private label protein powder and sell it on Amazon. So we would just type in protein powder um, and then we're going to type in private label because what we want to do is we want to find a supplier, then put our, our logo on the product and then sell it, So which is called private labeling. So there are actually companies that that specialize in that stuff. So they just make the product and they just leave the marketing to the other companies that are doing private labeling. So protein powder, private label, and then wherever you are selling. So if you're selling, for example, in Germany, just type in Germany. Um, if you're selling in the USA, type in USA, and then you're gonna find those local companies that are offering um, protein powder for private labeling. So here you can see this company, this company, this company. So there's tons of companies, especially for protein powder, obviously where you can just contact them. You can go on their website. You just want to contact them. You can always find like the contact information by clicking on contact us. And um, we're going to talk later about how to contact these companies. Uh, it's a lot easier, obviously, with local companies because uh, the culture is kind of the same and um, it's, the communication is just going to be easier. Most of the time, again, you're not going to find any uh, local suppliers for the product that you want to sell. But for a product like this, obviously, that I don't recommend you want to you sell the protein powder, but here you're going to find many options um, on Google. Cool. So let's now look at how to find suppliers in Asia. So the one website you want to go to to find the high quality suppliers in Asia is Alibaba.com. You've probably already heard about this website. This is really the best one to find high quality suppliers in Asia. So just go to Alibaba.com and then you're going to end up on this site right here. Where here in the top, you can see a search bar where you can type in your product. So sometimes you need to try a couple of different keywords until you finally find the product that you actually want to sell. So I'm just going to try um, survival um, settlers uh, ranch because I think this is what it's called. And look if our product comes up. And it looks like, uh, yes, this is our product. Uh, but before we go and look at any of these suppliers that we can see right here, the first thing you wanna do is tick this box where it says trade assurance right here and also verified supplier. Now, trade assurance is something that will protect you as the buyer when you order your inventory. Uh, if something happens to your order um, or the shipment is like far too late, then the trade assurance will basically protect you and you'll get a refund uh, if you actually pay through Alibaba using trade assurance. And you only want to work with suppliers that have trade assurance um, because otherwise there's, there's no reason to take the risk um, if they don't have trade assurance. And then you also want to go with verified suppliers. These are just the suppliers that are already vetted by Alibaba. So make sure those are ticked and then you can actually go and look at the suppliers. 
So what we want to do here is just um, look at each of the suppliers and we don't want to like get in detail just right now. We just want to like look at them and see if this is the product that we intend to sell. And then you just want to open them in a new tab. So we basically create a list of suppliers that might be a good fit for you. So this one looks like uh, it might be a like kind of bad quality, the case it looks like, but still let's look at it later on. Then we have this one right here. Also looks like this is our product. So we're going to just open this in a new tab. Then I'm going to go further down. Looks like they have a similar product as well, but they don't really have a case. So if there are a limited amount of suppliers, you could also look at this one right here, but I'm just going to go uh, on because I see there are many suppliers that actually have the exact same product that I'm looking for. So this one looks actually quite high quality. So I'm going to open this up in your tab as well. And I'm just going to go down and do this for a couple of more suppliers. Now, another thing I want to mention here is that the search algorithm of Alibaba is actually quite bad. So it's not like Google or, or Amazon where you're going to type in your product or your keyword and then the best results will just show up at the top. Um, sometimes the best supplier is actually found on like page four, five, six, seven. So you really have to spend the time and just go manually through all the possible suppliers because you don't want to like miss one that might have been the perfect supplier for you. So you have to be patient, spend some time on Alibaba and just look at all suppliers, make a list of them, save the links. And then once you have done that, you're going to look at them individually. So now I've opened up a couple of suppliers that I think might be a good fit so we can look at them uh, a bit closer. So the first thing that I noticed here with this one is that this is actually a trading company, which you can see right here. So let's quickly get into the difference between a manufacturing company and a trading company. So like I've previously mentioned, a manufacturer is the actual factory that is producing the products from scratch. And a trading company is just like a middleman buying um, from a manufacturer like a bulk order and then they're going to resell that product for a profit. It's kind of very similar what we are doing. We're just going to sell the product on Amazon with branding. What they do is they just buy the product from the manufacturer and then they're listed as well on Alibaba and they try to resell it uh, for a profit. So what are the, the advantages, disadvantages and differences between those two types of companies? So the price uh, is usually a bit cheaper when you go for a manufacturer because you're just buying straight from the source and a trading company, they need to make a profit as well. So they're going to have a margin on the product. They're going to buy cheaper from the manufacturer. Um, so obviously it's going to be better to go for a manufacturer directly if you're going to look at the price. And the minimum order quantity sometimes or mostly is a lot higher um, when you go directly with the manufacturer. Uh, when you go with a trading company, you can get away with a lot lower minimum order quantities because they just they just reselling basically. And the communication, this is actually a reason why you would want to go with the trading company because um, they usually have somebody who speaks English a lot better than with these manufacturer companies. So um, generally the communication is going to be easier if you're going to go with the trading company. And then product changes. So because we uh, eventually want to make some improvements to our product and maybe want to invent an entire new product with our manufacturer, it's going to be obviously better if you're going to be straight with the manufacturer compared to a trading company, because you don't want to tell the trading company to tell their manufacturer to do something. You want to have this straight line of communication. And this is why if you can, you want to go with a manufacturer if possible. Sometimes you're going to notice you're not going to find um, a manufacturer directly for your product because they are just at some place in, in Asia and they're not listed on Alibaba. So then you're going to have to tr go with a trading company, in which case you should do it if it's a good product and a good supplier. Uh, otherwise, you might want to look at another product. Now, what are some of the other things we want to look at here with our suppliers? So you want to check out the photos of the product that they're offering here. Um, sometimes the photos can be a bit deceptive. So you definitely want to order samples to really check if this is the correct product. And what you can also do if you're not sure is you can contact the supplier and ask them to send you some real photos of the actual product um, with their like phone camera. Or you can also uh, ask them for an actual video and tell them where they should like focus the camera on if you want to look at specific details. So if you're not sure if this is your actual product or you want to check out the general quality of it, um, you can ask for a video as well. And then in like maybe a couple of minutes, you're going to have a lot more information. However, that doesn't replace uh, the need for you to actually order a sample. And we're going to get into that a bit later. Then obviously you will also check out the price. 
but eventually you're gonna ask them for the prices of the minimum order quantities that you are, like you're gonna contact the supplier and then you're gonna be a lot more specific with the price. So um, another thing you can look at is uh, the years of experience. So right here you can see there are uh, 14 years of experience, which is really good. Sometimes you can see it's only one year or two years. Generally, the higher the better, but um, I wouldn't uh, like rule out any supplier just because they, it says they have a low um, amount of experience here, uh, just because some suppliers they, or some manufacturers, they have been in business for years, but for some reason they had to create a new account here on Alibaba. We can also check out some more information here. So for example, uh, we can see the lead time. So this is the time they take to manufacture the products. And this is gonna be important for you later on when you are managing your inventory. And then you can also have the customization. So you can see customized packaging and customized logo, which is very important for private labeling. They have a minimum order quantity of 100. But eventually all this information that you can see here, um, it's not really that important because you're gonna ask that stuff anyway when you are contacting the supplier. So um, you don't need to spend too much time like going in detail here with all this information. You just wanna make sure that this might be a viable option and it doesn't cost you anything to contact the supplier. And uh, after you get your first answer, you already know a lot more um, and a lot more uh, detailed information than you can get from here. And sometimes the things they, that are listed here is also wrong. So we definitely wanna contact the supplier and eventually you're gonna get a perf performer invoice anyway. Um, before you're gonna move on and actually choose your supplier. And what you can also do is actually check out their company itself by going to uh, this right here. So they're called Danyang Tongyu Tools Co. So it looks like they're specializing in uh, tools as you can see here. And uh, maybe you're also gonna find some other products they have. Um, so you can go to products right here and um, let's drill bits for wood. That's probably where our product is in. So let's see, it looks like they're specializing in the kind of product um, that we actually wanna sell. Now, I don't know, this is a trading company, but if you're gonna see a manufacturer actually specializing in what you actually wanna sell, that's actually a good sign because um, eventually if you wanna make some adjustments, some improvements to your product, it's gonna be a lot easier because they know what they're doing and it's gonna be easier to make the product better. So here, as you, as you can see, there's the product. So then the next step would simply be to contact the supplier and we actually have a contact supplier button right here where you can click on and contact the supplier. Now, when you click on this button and you don't already have an account yet with Alibaba, you're gonna be prompted to create an account first. I would recommend to create a separate business email just for Alibaba because um, usually you get some spam emails to that email account you're signing up with. So make sure to just create a separate account to um, communicate here on Alibaba. So then you click on contact supplier and then you're gonna see this box right here, which is the messaging system, which isn't too great. So eventually we wanna get them on uh, Skype so we can actually communicate with them properly and easily. So here, and the first thing I would wanna do is um, increase the order quantity to probably a thousand because if you have a too low order quantity, they're just not gonna respond to you very like immediately because um, they make their money with large orders and a long-term relationship. So a lot of repeat customers basically and, and like real companies that have maybe brick and mortar businesses, they're just gonna buy uh, like these huge orders. Um, so just put in a thousand pieces right here and then you can, um, you can fill this out if you want to. It's not really necessary actually. And what really helps is um, next to your entire text and the questions is to send them a photo or a screenshot of the product that you wanna sell on Amazon. So you can go to Amazon, you already have your competitor's products um, probably saved. Just send them a picture of the competitor's products and then just uh, attach it to them so they can, um, you can ask them if they have this exact same product. So here's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind when contacting suppliers. So first of all, you wanna not only contact one or two suppliers, you wanna contact five at least, like five to 10 suppliers locally and also on Alibaba, if you're gonna find local suppliers for your product. Because eventually you wanna have options, uh, which is also gonna help you to negotiate. And you don't wanna miss a great supplier just because you didn't contact them. Contacting suppliers doesn't cost you any money and also doesn't cost you any time because you're gonna send the same template to every single supplier. So make sure you contact all of them so you have a wide variety of options when choosing your supplier. The next thing is 
Um, again, like I said, you want to create a template for your first contact. So it's easy for you to just copy and paste it to all the other suppliers that would also be a good option. You, what, I, what, what I wouldn't recommend is to just take some template that you can find online because they have seen these templates a lot and then just they're just going to think that you're just another random person trying to sell some stuff online. And they want to work with big companies because that's where they make all the money. So you want to create your own template and you want to <clears throat> write it as, as official as possible. And you want to sound like a legit company. What you also should keep in mind is that English is not their main language. So you want to use as simple language as possible uh, because otherwise if you use fancy words and stuff, they're just going to ignore you and it's going to be a hard time com communicating with them. Then you want to switch to a messaging app like Skype or WeChat as quickly as possible um, because it makes it a lot easier for you to go back and forth, especially when you have more questions when you're uh, negotiating because going through the Alibaba messaging system is very cumbersome. Then you want to number your questions because um, if you're not going to number your questions, you're going to notice that they're ignoring questions that are numbered for some reason. Um, so number your questions and then eventually negotiate. So everything on Alibaba is negotiable, the minimum order quantities, um, the, the prices of the units and stuff. So you want to negotiate uh, as much as possible, just as long as uh, both parties eventually benefit uh, still from the deal. All right, so what are some of the questions that you want to ask when contacting your suppliers? So you basically want to take these questions and then create a first contact sheet, like a template that you can then send to every supplier. And again, be as professional as possible, sound like a legit big company so they actually respond to you. So the first question is, um, can you add a custom logo or packaging and packaging? Because um, if they can't do that, then uh, it's not going to work with private labeling. Then uh, do they have any colors and styles? Um, so this is just so you have more options. Um, what is the lead time? So this is again important to, for you to know uh, when you need to order your second order uh, because the lead time is the production time from the day you place your order to the day it's ready to be shipped. So this is gonna be the time they just take uh, to manufacture the products. Then you want to also ask, what is the minimum order quantity? So what is the lowest amount of units you can order for your first order? You also want to ask um, what the units cost is for an order of 250, 500, 1000 or any amount that you think is a good amount for your first inventory order. And you want to also ask um, what is the lead time for each of these order numbers? Then you want to ask if they can provide a sample via air shipping, because if you're going to do sea shipping for your sample, um, it's just going to take too long for you to make a decision eventually. So I, I would recommend air shipping for your sample. Then uh, what are the estimated shipping costs? So some suppliers, they, they are able to give you a shipping cost because they have their own freight forwarders. Um, and other suppliers, you're going to have to organize your own freight forwarder. And I'm going to show you later how to estimate the cost when you're going to use your own freight forwarder and how to find them. But for now, just ask them what the cost would be. If we're going to uh, estimate the shipping cost ourselves using our own freight forwarder, we're going to need the, dimen the dimensions as well of the, of the products. So you want to ask the weight, the dimensions and how many pieces come in a box so you can estimate the shipping cost. So those are the main questions you want to ask. You can add some more questions if there's some spe um, specific um, topics for your product but these are the ones that you should ask so you can have all the information you need to make an informed decision later on when you're going to decide on which supplier to go for. And now let's talk about one of the most important steps when it comes to choosing a supplier, which is getting and testing samples. So what you want to do for the suppliers that you have talked to that you think this might actually be a good fit, you want to order samples. So maybe that's like I don't know, three to five suppliers. And then you want to uh, tell them they should ship a sample to your house where you live. Now, again, I would recommend to use air shipping for that. I would recommend to use DHL Express so you get um, the product as fast as possible. Obviously, there's costs involved. And um, if you have a limited budget, you can also look into other shipping methods or uh, maybe you're going to order samples from really just the top suppliers that you think. So when you find a good one, then you don't need to order any more uh, samples. If you, do, if you don't find a good one, you can order some more. You want to pay through either Alibaba Trade Assurance or through PayPal Goods and Services. This is just so you are protected. And then you want to test those samples as you were the customer. So for example, this 
um, drill survival product that we're looking at here in this video, I would want to take that and actually go out and use it like in the actual use case. So I would take it, I would hammer on a tree or something like that and just like really use it for a couple of hours and just try to bring the product in all the situations where actually something could go wrong so that you can prevent choosing a product that will have a lot of issues eventually because again you want to avoid as many negative reviews as possible so that you can actually be successful with this product so make sure you test your product thoroughly before choosing a supplier so let's now talk about how to negotiate with the suppliers to get a great price so you can have a good profit margin. So first of all, if you have a local supplier, then the negotiation will probably be uh, limited because um, they usually have fixed prices and there's not a lot of wiggle room there. So um, you're just gonna have to take what you get there usually. However, um, with Alibaba, when you find those suppliers from Asia, they basically expect you to negotiate with them. So they're gonna give you a price that is too high and they know that and they, they're gonna uh, know that there is gonna be a negotiation taking place and then you're gonna find yourself somewhere in the middle. So the first thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna try and negotiate a win-win situation. Because let's say you, you, um, you get a very low price and they don't make any profit, then they're just gonna end up providing you with a bad quality product because otherwise they wouldn't be able to make a profit. So you wanna make sure that both parties uh, benefit from this deal. You wanna tell the supplier that you're actually looking for a long-term relationship that you want both parties to benefit. And they're, they're like used to people trying to just squeeze them out of any profit. So they're just gonna be very open to negotiating with you if you tell them that you want them to profit as well from this deal. Then. Uh, what you also want to keep in mind is that you want to contact multiple suppliers as i've said before because that gives you options that gives you a good idea of what a fair price would be then you can also ask other suppliers to match the price that you've gotten from uh, another supplier so then you can s tell them look i have options uh, i can go to this supplier i can go to this supplier obviously that's just one factor like the price or which supplier you're going to choose but if you have a product that the quality isn't so good but the price is good you can ask the supplier with the good quality product to match the price of the other one so you want to have options that's the main point here then long-term relationship again like i said you reiterate to them that you're looking for a long-term relationship because that's where they are making all their money and then like negotiation is um they're going to give you the first offer then it's very good for you if you know the floor price. So if you know the price where they're basically breaking even, then you pretty much know how far you can go um, with your negotiation. And one way you can find out the floor price is by going to a website called 1688. So this website is basically a Chinese version of Alibaba. And um, you're gonna navigate through this website by just using Google Translate. And then you're gonna find your products um, uh, for the Chinese market, basically. And the prices usually are a lot cheaper. So here you can basically see how, for what price the suppliers are offering their products for domestic customers, which is usually cheaper. So there you get a better idea of what the floor price is for your supplier. And then once you've negotiated all the details for your potential order, you wanna ask for something called a pro forma invoice. This is just like an invoice that you would get if you would in fact order your inventory from this supplier. You wanna make sure the order quantity is on there. You wanna make sure the unit cost is on there, including the cost for the logo, the packaging, and also the manual insert, which we're gonna talk about later. And um, also the shipping cost if it is available. So once you have the pro forma invoices of all these um, suppliers that you've talked to, you have all the details that you need to make your informed decision. And then once you have your pro forma invoice with all the information about the unit cost and the shipping cost, you wanna go back to your Ecom Freedom Profit Calculator, which we have looked at in the product research phase, and you wanna to go to your product and then change all the numbers here to the actual numbers that you have negotiated. So let's say our unit cost is in fact like uh, $8, and then the shipping cost is maybe $3.50. So now we can again go back to the information and we can see our actual profit margin that is actually realistic. So don't forget to actually do this before deciding on a supplier, because you again wanna make sure that the profit margin 
is in fact good. Now, if you don't know um, the shipping cost because they you need to use your own freight forwarder, meaning you need to organize the shipping yourself, then you you want to use uh, FreightOS, which is a website where you can find freight forwarders to calculate your shipping cost and then you can put it in here. I'm going to show you how to do that in the shipping phase so you can skip ahead to that if you want to. However, use the profit calculator here to um, do your final profit calculation so you can make a decision. So then when you have all the information you need from your potential suppliers, you basically want to make a list and then also look at all the criteria that we have discussed in the beginning of this phase, which is product quality, unit cost, communication, manufacturer or trading company and experience and rating. So you want to compare all the suppliers against each other and then choose the best one. Now, if you didn't find a good supplier, then don't just take any random one and go ahead selling this product because you need to have a good supplier in order to be um, successful on Amazon. So it's better to go for another product compared to a product that would be good, but you couldn't find a good supplier for that. So just keep that in mind as well. And one thing you also want to keep in mind is that um, before you order your first inventory, which is something we're going to talk about later in another uh, phase, you want to make sure that the entire deal is um, in the the chat of Alibaba itself. This is just important because if you if something happens and then you want to use trade assurance to get a refund, um, then the entire deal needs to be um, documented in the uh, Alibaba chat. So just tell the supplier to reiterate all the deals that you have negotiated with them in the chat. So it's just black and white, everything is there. So you can go back and then just use trade assurance if something were to happen.